We do have some breaking news on a story you saw exclusively first right here on 10. Charges said to be announced against Miami Beach police officers involved in a controversial arrest. Let's send it over to Rosh Lowe. He is live at the state attorney's office where that announcement is about to be made. Well, on Friday, when we first reported this story, we said the main thing with this story is this video apparently showing several Miami Beach police officers using what the state is calling excessive force in their arrests of several individuals. We are expecting to hear from Miami-Dade State Attorney Catherine Fernandez-Rundle, who is walking up behind me now, as well as Miami Beach Police Chief Richard Clemens. So let's take a quick listen to what they have to say. Oops, sorry. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're here today as a result of what transpired at the Royal Palm Hotel on Miami Beach last week. I do believe that body-worn cameras are an important part of policing, and as you know, I advocated from the very beginning, along with the former chief of Miami Beach Police Department, for their countywide usage. As you will see, they played a critical role in this case. As has already been reported by a number of media outlets, I believe, believe that these body-worn cameras are an important part of this case. In the early morning hours of July 26, 24-year-old Dalonta Crudup allegedly had an interaction with a Miami Beach po bicycle police officer, which left the bicycle officer with leg injuries requiring hospitalization and crutches. Mr. Crudup allegedly fled the scene on a scooter rushing to the Royal Palm Hotel where he was staying. Police Lieutenant Jose Reina followed him into the hotel, catching up to Mr. Crudup at the hotel elevator and holds him at gunpoint. This will be clearly shown in the video we will be playing for you in just a few moments. Mr. Crudup exits the elevator with his hands raised and drops down to the ground with his arms outstretched in front of him. He then places his hands behind his back. As Lieutenant Rainey kneels to apparently begin placing Mr. Crudup in handcuffs, other Miami Beach police officers arrive on the scene. Now, some of the body camera footage captures the clink that you're not going to hear or disentain uh, of the handcuffs being secured around Mr. Crudup's wrists. Ultimately, approximately 21 other Miami Beach officers arrive on the scene to assist in various degrees the apprehension of Mr. Crudup. It is at this point the situation begins to change, in our opinion, from a legitimate arrest of a criminal suspect into an ongoing investigation of the use of force by five Miami Beach police officers leading to their being criminally charged today. By the way, this is why duty to intervene in training, which I and this police chief and others as part of our continuing justice reform commission felt it was necessary part of police reform legislation that ultimately was passed by the legislature this last se legislative session. That new law, however, keep in mind, went into effect on July 1st. So today with me are members of my public corruption unit who are working the ongoing investigation and who will be prosecuting these criminal cases and others that may develop out of this investigation. I'd like to start with my deputy chief, Tim Vandergeesen. He's over here. He's also the chief of our public corruption unit. We also have Robin, there he is, Robin Picaro over here. In addition to him being a division chief, He's also uh, a, a part of our police accountability and integrity team, Pate. I want to thank both of you gentlemen very much for all your work throughout the weekend. There's Johnny Hardiman is also here from that unit. She worked tirelessly on this as well. I also want to give credit to the Miami Beach Police Chief, Richard Clements, who quickly moved to bring my prosecutors in to help review the circumstances of this arrest and the arrest of Caleb Vaughn and the subsequent actions that occurred. I want to point this out because it was his command staff 
that immediately alerted the chief's office of internal affairs and the chief took swift action and immediately referred what had occurred to us as well as suggesting that the case against Mr. Vaughn be dropped. We agreed and we did so immediately. Each one of us standing here today recognizes that police officers face a variety of dangers on the job each and every day. On this issue, there is no doubt, no confusion, and certainly no disagreement. However, as I previously said, excessive force can never, ever, ever be an acceptable foundation for the policing of any community. Officers who forget the fact and forget that fact do a grave disservice to the people they have sworn to serve. They harm their own departments and they belittle the good work and hard work that each of their fellow officers tries to accomplish in the community. So at this point, let us begin to review this video, which has been put together uh, from police body camera material, as well as from video that was in the lobby of the Royal Palm Hotel. So you, you see these screens playing in front of you. Um, so at this point, we're gonna, what we're gonna try to do is we've tried to segment it into two different victims, okay? So we're going to start with the first focus of actions involving taking Mr. Crudup into custody. You'll see, and then we're going to focus on the interaction with Caleb Vaughn after this. So at this point, George, if you could play the video, please. You'll see Mr. Crudup getting to the elevator. You'll see Lieutenant Jose Reyna, who follows Mr. Crudup into the hotel catching up to him at the hotel elevator. He holds him at gunpoint. Mr. Crudup uh, has his hands raised and he drops to the ground. And now his arms are outstretched in front of him. He then places his hands behind his back as Lieutenant Rainey kneels to apparently begin placing Mr. Crudup in handcuffs. Other Miami Beach police officers arrive on the scene. And if you could stop just there. Uh, if you could roll back just a little bit, George. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch it very, as you can see, it moves very slowly, so we're trying to. Okay, you'll see there Officer Kevin Perez kicking Mr. Crudup. We believe, as I said earlier, we just didn't catch it for you, that the handcuffs were already placed on him. We can hear it on another uh, body worn camera. Then you'll see um, the video appears to show uh, Sergeant Jose Perez, and we're still with Kevin Perez. Go on to the next one, please. You see the slow motion replay there? Stop it right there, George. Can you see this? I don't know if you, it took me several times. So I don't, can you see that action right there? Is that visible to all of you? Yes? Okay, good. Now what you'll see is about 15 seconds later, uh, he is on the ground handcuffed. He's not really moving, but he is being held down. You saw the, the subsequent kick again by Sergeant Perez. And then we'll keep moving with that. You'll see a head slam. I don't know if you can catch that there. See that right there? So Sergeant Perez had, uh, who again, who kicked him had then You'll see him come back around in just a second. You see him down on the ground there. That's after the body slam. Then you'll see them all sort of disperse. Um, and then about eight seconds later, while well, he's still on the ground, no longer moving again, it appears Sergeant Perez comes back. You'll see this right here. Watch there. 
Okay. Did you see that kick there? Okay. There it is in, in, in slow motion replay. So that's three times by Sergeant Officer Perez. So for these actions, Miami Beach Police Sergeant Jose Perez is being charged today. We then have Miami Beach Officer Kevin Perez, who's also, by the way, there's no relationship, as I understand it, right, Chief? Between the two Perez's, it's just coincidental, they both have a similar, same last name. This, uh, this video appears to show Kevin Perez uh, kicking Mr. Crud up at least four times. Let's see. You see the back there? That's officer. That's a different angle. These are body worn cameras at this point. Then about five seconds later. We see Officer Kim, Kim pick him up, and again, I think we've done this already. Okay, so now, does that conclude this part of the videos? Okay, so now we're going to move on to the scenario involving victim Kayla Vaughn. So I don't know if you saw it earlier, I, I failed to point it out to you. Um, but you'll see that, according to the video, Mr. Kayla Vaughn seems to be a bystander in the hotel lobby. And he appears to be standing approximately uh, 12 to 15 feet away from the apprehension of Mr. Crudup. And Mr. Vaughn appears to begin filming the scene with his, looks like his cell phone, at which point Officer Robert Sabater arrives on the scene approximately 30 seconds after Mr. Vaughn first began filming without incident. You see, go back to that again, please, George. Could you roll that back? Yeah. So you see, we think the officers here are saying back up, and you'll see him te take about four steps back with his camera. Now you see Officer Sabater uh, running in and tackling him there. Now, if you hold it right there, now what you see is after he's tackled, this is actually, this, these are his shorts, and that's a fist right there. And watch, watch what happens next. I'm sorry, it's, but it's all we have. It's what it is. So if you could play that, George, please. Now, what you see there is a series of punches in the back. Rib, air, rib cage area or kidney area, but it's on the back. You see that there? So because of those actions that you just saw, Miami Beach Police Officer Robert Sabater is being charged today. Now we have the body-worn camera video of Officer David Rivas who appears to show Mr. Vaughn actively backing away from the officer Revis. Remember when you saw that initially? Uh, off, uh, but nonetheless, Officer Sabater uh, then pins Mr. Vaughn against the column. Well, approximately 12 seconds later, while he's being handcuffed, you can see from the videos, and we just went through this, uh, Officer, well, back, back again, that's Officer Revis, thank you, who's repeatedly striking Mr. Vaughn as I said, in the ribcage area until he's ultimately brought to the ground. And so for this reason, for these actions, Miami Beach Police Officer David Rivas is being charged today. We then have the body-worn camera video of Officer Steven Serrano, uh, where it appears to show that Mr. Vaughn is being cornered by several officers and it appears to show he's being Mr. Officer Serrano repeatedly striking Mr. Vaughn until he's ultimately brought to the ground. I think we just went through that as well. So let me just say, you can see that there. The different videos are the same thing, so that's why it seems repetitive. You see it right there? Can you roll that back, George, please, for a second? 
Yeah. We're doing this from another room, so that's why it seems to be not as well, uh, well timed as we would like it to be. So let me just conclude by saying that uh, the investigation into this incident, it is continuing. This was a week ago. And uh, potentially other uh, additional charges may be filed. Um, but today, we know that the five officers, Sergeant Jose Perez, Officer Kevin Perez, Robert Sabater, and Officer David Rivas, and Officer Stephen <laughs> Serrano are all being charged with uh, battery. And you've been watching uh, uh, our missing. coverage of a story that we first broke last week. Our Rosh Lowe broke this story last week. Five officers now officially being charged in the rough arrest of two individuals that happened last week.